Live and Local is proudly sponsored by Eels and Tronvold Law Offices. McGrath Family of Dealerships. And Wald Collision Center in Fairfax. This is a presentation of KCRG TV9 Live Events. Join KCRG TV9 in recognizing the hard work all of our graduates have accomplished this year. Congratulations, graduates. Hello and welcome to the 65th Washington High School commencement for this class, the class of 2022. At this time, we ask that you rise and remain standing for three things, the processional, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the Star Spangled Banner. And I'll return for us to all sit back down. So please stand at this time.
we, as we remain standing, please welcome Sarah Francisco, Keegan Keck, and Jason McElroy as they will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, we would like to say, have a moment of silence in remembrance of the victims in the Texas school elementary school shooting and the Buffalo uh, market shooting. Your right hands on your chest, and we will start in one, two, three. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. I would like to invite the audience to join in singing the Star the Banner, which will be led by Leslie Bucknell, Christian Dehoff, Ethan Galoche, and Lucia Salazar. Please be seated. Next, I'd like to introduce Maggie Gorman and Jack Bierbaum, our student body president and vice president. Hi, everybody. I'm Maggie Gorman, student body president. Hello, everyone. I'm Jack Bierbaum, the student body vice president. Welcome friends, family, and graduates of the class of 2022. We are so honored to be here tonight. Our high school experience was unlike any other. We were tasked with the challenge of bringing back Washington High School pride. Our senior year was unique because we only had a few months in the halls before we became the upperclassmen. Our teachers and administrators pushed us to lead the younger generation and show them what being a warrior meant. We had the honor of reviving our student center program. If you are involved in student senate, you know how big of an impact we have on the school as well as the challenges we faced during the online portion of our high school years. If you were never a part of Student Senate, you may not know all we do on your behalf, like the countless hours spent decorating, then cleaning up from dances, planning each homecoming event, fundraising, and tutoring, just to name a few. And that means we have served you well. This year, we were lucky enough to bring back some of our favorite events. We started off the year with an in-person homecoming week and dance, raised money for HACAP, 
spent time with our circle of friends, and held an in-person spring fling dance. And many more events we got to bring back again. These incredible events you all get to feel, enjoy feel so much more special when you all know the work that went into that, uh, to make them happen. We want to give the biggest thank you to Mr. Logan. He's a second year teacher at WASH, and he stepped up when our previous teacher had to step down. Although at first there was a lot of frustration and stress, we truly could not have had a, as a successful year without your consistent encouragement and support. Thank you for having the courage to take on this group. Additional shout out to Mr. Ballard, Ms. Kane, who is now Dr. Kane, <laughs> Mr. Lamaster, and Mr. Schultz. Thank you for the constant last minute meetings and for trusting our class with the student body. Lastly, we want to leave you graduates with this. We hope you all learn and grow as you take on your next chapter. How you acted in high school does not need to define how you act now. We've learned a lot during our time at this school. Most importantly, the impact of being a decent person. We're not saying you need to be perfect because we all know that's not possible. But what we're saying is this. You don't get to choose how people treat you. You get to choose how you react to it. Some people aren't gonna like you and that's fine. Some people are gonna try to take away from your successes and that's okay. How you respond is what's important. We've all made mistakes, we're all human. It's what you learn from these mistakes that matters. At some point, you'll have to learn that life is truly what you make it. Regardless of the hand you were dealt four years ago as a freshman, it's what you did with these last four years that makes a difference. What you do with your next years will help determine the kind of life you'll live. Remember, every day is a new day, which is another chance to be better than you were yesterday. I hope you all choose to be good and do good in your future endeavors. Signing off, we all wish you the very best and good luck to you. Thank you all for being here, and remember, once, once a warrior, warrior, always a warrior. warrior. Please welcome to the stage senior class officers Jada Federick Williams and Yasmin Herbs. Sorry. Music is very important at Washington High School. Our music ensembles include hundreds of students and are led by our directors, Mr. Jared Wacker, Mr. Peter Westphalen, Mrs. Amy Farley, Mr. Andrew Steffen, and Mr. Joel Nagel. We are proud of the outstanding achievements of our vocal and instrumental groups. You have already heard the Wind Symphony and Symphony Orchestra play in our graduates with the processional, and our senior vocal quartet lead us in the national anthem. Later in the program, you will hear the concert choir perform two songs, including the Washington alma mater. This evening, I have the honor of introducing the Cedar Rapids Community School District's Board of Education. The board members devote countless volunteer hours to our schools. We appreciate your efforts as you deal with all the issues of overseeing our district. Nancy Humbles, Jennifer Newman, and Marcy Roundtree. Thank you all for joining us tonight and for all you do for our benefit. Please welcome Win U, Senior Class Vice President, to recognize our 2022 Washington High School retirees. Cindy Henley. Henley is retiring after 23 years as a paraeducator at Washington High School. Cindy was hired as a one-to-one -one teacher associate in October 1999. She received her journalist certification from Kirkwood Community College in 2003 and advanced certification in 2008. Her retirement plans include travel, gardening, quilting, and car shows. Ted Tauber. Mr. Tauber graduated from Cedar Rapids Washington High School in 1984. He started coaching and teaching for the Sea Rapids School District in 1989. He has taught and coached at the Lincoln Sandwood Community Schools, Cedar Rapids Jefferson, Cedar Rapids Washington, Taft Middle School, and McKinley Middle School. Throughout his career, he has taught industrial technology, career and technology education, mathematics, and business education. Joan Steckel. Steckel has taught CTE, career and technical education, family and consumer sciences for 38 years in Iowa and South Dakota in middle and high school settings. 
She's had a variety of responsibilities outside of the classroom, including FCCLA advisor for several years and volleyball and cheerleading coach. One of the best things to happen during her career related to CTE was increased emphasis on building career pathways that help students prepare for the changing world of work. Watching and encouraging students to pursue passions related to their future was most enjoyable. Bill Lammers. Mr. Lammers is completing his 31st year as a full-time teacher and 34th year working educational theater. His career began here at WASH, where he completed both his practicum and student teaching experiences during the 1987 to 88 school year. While completing his certifications and degree at the University of Iowa, he was hired and worked as the assistant technical director for the Washington Drama Department. After substitute teaching during the 1989 to 90 school year, Mr. Lammers was hired by Clinton High School in 1990 as a language arts teacher and the director of theater. Three years later, he was hired to replace Dave Smith as a language arts teacher and technical director to the performing arts at Washington. In 1998, he was selected as a summer fellow at the Northwestern University School of Speech and Theater. And he has twice been selected for the Sierra Rapids Rotary Service Above Self Award. In his time at WASH, Mr. Lammers has supervised the technical needs of 73 plays, 40 musicals, 25 most shows, and hundreds of performing arts concerts and all school assemblies and events during his tenure at WASH. At this time, Mr. Ballard will be returning to the podium. Thanks, Wynn. By the way, can I get a little more volume in the monitor? I'm sorry to be that guy, but I couldn't hear. There we go. The Washington Concert Choir will perform two songs this evening. The first is the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and after the Battle Hymn of the Republic, we will ask that everyone rise for the alma mater. Now, let's enjoy some wonderful music.
Thank you, choir, orchestra, and band, for all the hard work there and our seniors who were able to play one last time for us. As you see, we can all be seated. Next up, we'll have our special, special message from our senior class president, Weston DeWolf. <clears throat> Thank you for being here tonight to celebrate the class of 2022's graduation. It is truly surreal to think of how quickly this day has come upon us. I stand here with you, our class of nearly 300 graduates, ready to face life's newest challenges. For some, that means going out to college and studying what you have a passion for or going into the trades. Others will be serving our country in the military. And still, others might be trying to figure out just what the next chapter entails. No matter where we are in 10 or 20 years, we can all attest to the fact that we are part of this fantastic class of warriors. And look at what we've been through. When thinking back on lessons that stuck with me over the past four years, I remember a moment when our school counselors came to talk to our classes. The point was brought up that you only get one high school. While on the surface that point seems obvious, I knew that phrase had a deeper meaning. As time has passed, I've been able to reflect on that statement. Every high schooler's journey is different because of how each of us has chosen to carve our own paths. Of course, high school came with the challenges that almost all students of years past have endured. We've passed trials of the AP tests, pushed through the long sports practices, the many music and theater rehearsals, and the grind to get all of our homework done by the next Monday, all while holding a job down outside of school. Along with that, this class experienced so much change at Washington. First off, we've seen a whole new administration take over the reins of WHS. Thanks to them, our high school continues to be a positive environment for us to learn and grow, and it's become a place where future high school students want to be. Compared to many decades of WASH grads, however, we've survived high school through a pandemic and a derecho. The deprivation of our typical high school opportunities left our class fragmented. I myself felt disconnected from many of the familiar faces that I saw on a daily basis. As someone who enjoys interaction with my peers and feels that leadership comes as a byproduct of participation, I found it difficult to adjust to the new way of living. The change to the online learning was difficult for all of us. Students didn't get the same authentic learning as they would in the classroom, and teachers changed their curriculum to meet the new virtual experience. Maybe the new block scheduling had you flying to stay awake at another 90-minute lecture. Maybe you had your microphone on for 20 minutes in the Google Meet before realizing it. Not to mention the fact that we were shortchanged in the area of person-to-person -person contact with our friends, peers, and teachers. Despite all that, we've made it through these struggles with success, and we did it together. Let's not forget all the time we spent out, outside of school as well. In the past four years, we've piled the seats of Kingston Stadium to cheer on our football team, advocated for human rights in creative ways through events like Jamnesty and Right for Rights, started new activities like the Sledding Club, and much more. These experiences have fostered new friendships and even more heartfelt memories to look back on. No matter how you've chosen to spend your time over these years, WASH has certainly provided us with countless opportunities to connect with our student body. While I'm on the topic of what our warriors have done outside the classroom, it's only fair to shed some light on what happened inside. I could not offer more gratitude to the teachers and staff of WHS. Because of them, we are prepared to use our education for the betterment of today's world. As we walk into the hallways of the Sound of the Bell every day, we truly appreciate the tremendous effort you've dedicated towards us. Thank you. Now that this chapter is coming to a close, we must look forward on what we will accomplish next. I'm certain that our class is destined to achieve great things. Over the course of our high school career, we've collected blocks of knowledge. Now we are free to branch out and use those blocks to build whatever we want. The groundwork has been laid out for all of us to realize success without limits. So be your own biggest supporter. The students of our generation will be doing things such as making the next big social media platform or helping in the advancement of treating diseases or combating the next pandemic. Anything that you end up doing has the possibility to bring positive change to the lives of others. So as I leave the stage and go on to become one of many Warrior alumni, I encourage you to reflect. Reflect on what you have done to build upon Washington High School's legacy. Just like you've taken inspiration from someone along your journey, be an inspiration to others. 
Your dedication and perseverance is the reason for our school's strong reputation. We, the class of 2022, have made an impact on what it means to be a Washington warrior. And while we may not have the daily reminder on morning announcements, we'll always have reason to say, it's always a great day to be a warrior. I will now introduce ADASTRA members Vivian Chanley, Grace Fox, and Estelle Schneiderman. We are pleased to introduce the students who have earned the title of salutatorian. At our school, students who complete high school with cumulative grade point averages between 3.95 and 3.99 receive salutatorian medallions. After they are introduced, we will congratulate them with our applause. Please stand when your name is called. Lyndon Haig, Reed Ortiz, Hannah Snitke. We have the privilege of introducing the members of our class who finished their high school careers with accumulative grade point averages above 4.0. Here then are the students in the class of 2022 have a who have earned the distinction of valedictorian. Please stand when your name is called and remain standing. We'll applaud after all are standing. Holly Altfelish, Delaney Barthels, Shelby Ann Brown, Lisa Bucknell, Jessica Klein, Carly Cooper, Finnegan DeBoom, Christian DeWolf, Weston DeWolf, Andrew Dolan, Allison Dye, Mackenzie Eichhorn, Grace Fox, Charlotte Fusco, Ethan Galushis, Claudia Gay, Maggie Gorman. Claire Hafner, Yasmin Hers, Amija Jones, Kira Lagrange, Vivian Lynn, Nathan McDermott, Jazari McKiernan, Tara Morgan, Anna Newman, Emily Oldor, Tyler Orm, Abigail Owens, Aleem Penn. Vivian Pham, Jack Rogers, Isabel Schmidt, Nathan Schmidt, Estelle Schneiderman, Vivian Chanley, Ariana Thomas, Anna Katweetball, Liberty Wickham, and Julia Zarodnik. <laughs> Valedictorians, please be seated. Traditionally at Washington, the three valedictorians with the highest grade point averages have the honor of speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, with the third highest, Claudia Gay. When I was seven years old, I first heard their phrase, reach for the stars with your toes. It's not a wildly popular saying, and to this day, I have no idea where I heard it. However, it stayed with me. My first grade self was confused as to how this would work, let alone why someone would want to do it. I could not stand on my head or hold a handstand for more than three seconds. So I failed to see how my toes could ever reach up towards the sky higher than my fingers. All I wanted to do was reach up and grab a star as fast as I could. I did not want to wait to follow my path. So why would I take a longer, more difficult way by doing it with my toes? None of it made sense to me. Nevertheless, it stuck in my head, most likely out of curiosity. Yet, I like to think it stuck with me more as a guiding principle to let me know that no matter what, things would be okay. Now, 10 years later, I think I have an idea of what it actually meant. It does not matter how any of us get to our stars, just that we are reaching for them. Whether our stars are going on to get our PhDs, starting our own companies, going into the active forces, pursuing a career in art, starting a family, or anything else you aspire to do, we have all spent our lives in some way or another reaching for it. I'm sure I'm not the first to tell any of us that the journey we take to our stars may not be the most direct. There are a million different ways to get to our stars. We may try and reach a few different stars before finally reaching out and grasping onto the one that is designed for us. We may grab one star and hold on to it for a while before deciding to move to another. We may have two different stars, both shining equally as bright. We may not even be grabbing at them with our fingers. 
There's not one way that is better than any other. While I do not know what each of our paths to the stars look like, I do know that we all have one similar part, a four-year journey through Washington High School. While we may have planned four years ago to reach for our diplomas with our fingers, I know that we all are going to do it today, reaching with our toes. Because nothing in the past four years of our life has been direct or likely planned. None of us plan to never finish our math unit in the spring of sophomore year, or spend our summer clearing tree limbs, or learn US history at home, or let's be honest, we are sitting on our beds in our pajamas, or even to take economics while wearing a mask. Along with that, we did not always have any idea where the next step forward was. In the beginning of March 2020, I asked my mom what she did when she had to quarantine as a kid. I would assume that there was no way that she hadn't done it at least once before. Much to my surprise, the response was that she had never done this before. No one had. No one had dealt with the pandemic that we are still encountering. No one had dealt with trying to learn online either. There was no path we could see in front of us. For the first time, we were building the path as we took it. However, none of this limited us. We found new ways to spend time together. Instead of sitting in the lunchroom putting 12 at a table that seats eight, we played Kahoot over Zoom. We ensured that our high school experience was not stumped. We took it upon ourselves to ensure that WASH traditions, such as homecoming week theme days, participating in all-state speech and crump squad, didn't die off. We had to rely on ourselves and each other to get what we wanted, and we did. While everyone learned to manage in different ways, we all did it. No matter what the universe threw at us, we all continued on our paths, even if we were doing it feet first rather than head first. Today is just the next step in reaching for our own stars. And I can say confidently that it won't be the last step. This is a room full of amazing people that I am honored to know, all reaching for their stars with their toes. Please welcome Ethan Galucius, who earned the second highest grade point average in our class. Hello, class of 2022. I want to wish a warm welcome to all students, educators, brothers, sisters, family, and friends. And I also want to give a big thank you to all the Washington teachers, faculty, and of course, Mr. Darius Ballard. I am so excited for us to have all made it this far. We all started from the bottom. Now it looks like the whole team has made it. <laughs> we have made some great memories all over the years. We have the memories of football our freshman year when we beat Jefferson 54 to 14 and our senior year where we still beat them 79 to 0. How about that? We also have our time in the math department, memorizing the quadratic formula and a squared plus b squared equals c squared. These are things that I'm sure we will use every single day of our careers. <laughs> we'll never forget the year of virtual learning, where we were definitely paying attention to all our classes and not napping or playing video games. Mr. Hill, Mr. Nell, Squire Sensei, I promise I didn't doze off, even once. I've been given the opportunity today to speak here at graduation. And at first, I was excited about this, but now I'm wondering if it was all a clever ploy by Mr. Hilton and Ms. Harger to get me to do one final English assignment. <laughs> There's no doubt I was nervous while writing this, because out of all the lessons I've had at WASH, I don't remember a single one on how to write a grad speech. So with that in mind, bear with me. We live in a time where we're told to be our authentic selves, that we should live our best life, most of our lives have been directed to be inwardly focused, to find our unique identity and express it. But now what? Certainly being true to oneself is important, but is that all there is? The wholeness of my life can't be just to my fulfillment. I don't exist in a vacuum. Yes, we need to be our authentic selves, but there are eight billion more selves out there in the world. What good is it if I'm happy at the expense of the happiness of those around me? 
Sometimes, being true to ourselves gets confused with fulfilling our personal desires, some of which are selfish. The greed that drives a businessman to cut safety measures in exchange for a higher profit margin is a selfish desire. The egotism that causes someone to cut in front of a line of patiently waiting people is a selfish desire. I don't think the best life comes from just being true to myself. I think it comes from being true for someone else, maybe everyone else. And that requires us to reflect and to change. We can change ourselves only through the choices we make. It is undeniable that the choices we make influence our future lives. As author Tim Fargo once said, what you choose today will determine who you are tomorrow. There are many big decisions we have to make in our lives. Some of these might include, where will I attend school next year? What will my job be next year? Or what the heck am I doing with my life? The, while these are all major decisions, I don't believe that these are important in shaping who we are as the small decisions we make every single day. These decisions include, do I do my homework now or later? Do I hold the door open for the person behind me? Do I tell the truth even when there might be negative consequences for me? The answers to these questions make much more of a difference. Many of the small decisions we make each day may seem minuscule, but eventually they add up. For example, if we all started reading a book today, the average book is about 300 pages. If starting today, you read only 10 pages of a book every day, after one year, you will have read around 13 books. And if you continue this over the course of an average lifespan, by the end of it, you will have read approximately 730 books. Let's say everyone in my graduating class takes on this challenge. We will have gained the knowledge of over 218,000 books. Imagine how much impact our class would have on the world. But let's switch it away from books. What if we all went out of our way to do something kind for someone each day? What if we tried to have patience with our family's friends and yes, even the people who annoy us? If we fixed only one problem in our homes and communities each day, imagine the change we could make. You don't have to solve everyone's problems. Remember the quote from Mother Teresa, if you cannot feed 100 people, feed one. Through daily incremental progress, we can change the world for the better. Also, keep in mind that being rich or popular does not specifically determine success or happiness in life. My mom has shared with me experiences she had while working in a cancer clinic. She said that many people would talk to her about their lives because they didn't know how much time they had left to live. Some people felt that they had lived very good lives and mentioned few regrets. Others, however, shared fears that they hadn't accomplished what they had hoped to in this life. No one mentioned the amount of money they made, their levels of education. They didn't talk about travel, fame, or earning major awards. The successes or perceived failures they shared were related to family, relationships, friendships, knowledge, and having contributed something meaningful to the world. They wanted to know that their life had made a difference for someone. As we look forward to the future, I invite you to think where you want to end up, what you want to contribute to the world. As Stephen Covey said, begin with the end in mind. Be true to yourself, but remember, sometimes to be true to ourselves, we must change ourselves. Make the little choices count so that you can live a life of no regrets. When we bring happiness to others' lives, we bring happiness to our own. If you work hard, love, and serve those around you in your families and communities, I know you will find success and happiness. For now, let's celebrate. We've made it this far, about to receive a piece of paper that hopefully makes it easier for us to get out of our parents' basements. While some of us might not know how to work a washing machine or pay our taxes, we have grown so much, not just in our education, but as people too. I cannot wait 
to see how the class of 2022 uses our power of choice to change the world. Thank you. Almost slipped up there. It may seem amiss to see 40 valedictorians in your program. However, we award the valedictorian distinction to students that earn a cumulative GPA of 4.0 or higher. Two factors have made it possible to earn a GPA over 4.0. The first factor was the implementation of the plus and minus grades beginning with the 1987 and 1988 school year. An A plus has a value of 4.33. The second factor was the implementation of a weighted grade for advanced placement courses, a change that also began in 1987. An A in AP courses is valued at a 5.0. Our school believes the clear target of 4.0 for valedictorian status is a powerful motivator for many students. Most students of tonight's valedictorians set their goal of graduating with a GPA of 4.0 in their freshman year or even earlier. I now have the honor of introducing Jessica Klein, who earned the highest GPA in our class this year. Good evening. I would like to take a second to say with absolute certainty that every student in this room today is doing as I am about to do. Thinking about, to paraphrase beloved storyteller Mr. Rogers, all of the people that loved us into being. So to every parent, sibling, grandparent, teammate, friend, teacher, coach, and mentor, I offer this thank you from all of us to you. I am no Mr. Rogers, but I promise a good story is coming. But first, I would like to thank Mr. Dewar and Mr. Sloma, who welcomed me into the Washington Literary Press, thereby teaching me the importance of communities oriented towards kindness, generosity, and creativity. I would also like to thank my debate coaches, Mr. Sprouse and Mr. Wright, Together, they foster a squad with an orientation towards excellence that can't help but produce students with a work ethic strong enough to open doors to opportunities that would otherwise remain locked. Finally, I would like to thank my debate partner and my best friend, Claudia Gay. When I was faced with a life-changing surgical complication in the middle of this school year, Claudia didn't hesitate to take up the fight with me to navigate the confusion, the fear, and the sadness that follows a significant setback. Claudia didn't stop there either. Under Claudia's leadership, we problem solved every barrier my changing health posed to our traditional approach to competitive debate. Together, we won my second consecutive state debate title for Washington and qualified for the national debate tournament. Debate is a team sport, but there's no doubt about it. Claudia is our team's and my personal MVP. All right, so as promised, I would like to tell you a story. The year is approximately 1346. As you might recall from your world history class, there were some fleas some rats, some boats, a skosh bit of biological warfare, and boom, you got yourself an Afro-Eurasian bubonic plague remembered by historians as the Black Death. About 25 million Europeans alone had died by about 1357. Anti-Semitism was intensified, the land went undercultivated, so on and so forth. Things in Europe they could be going a little bit better. And I won't sugarcoat it. The more you study this period of history, the bleaker it begins to look. Focusing again just on Europe, there was the Hundred Years' War, which actually lasted 116 years. That's right, it was so bad we pretend it was nearly two decades shorter than it actually was. Joan of Arc was burned at the stake. Courtesy of the Great Schism, there were way more popes than anyone actually knew what to do with, etc. 
The point is, the times were not just tough, they were awful. And truth be told, as weird as it may sound, this period of history has long been one of my favorites to study. But in recent years, my frame for thinking about the times that weren't just tough, but instead were awful, has changed. After all, we have come to know a thing or two about a pandemic driven by an airborne disease, a period of global destabilization, and individuals being killed at the hands of the state. I want to be clear. My point is not that we are living through a time nearly as bad or as deadly as 14th century Europe. Instead, I'm aiming to point out that times as, times as of late, well, for many of us, they've been much like they were back then, awful. But as you might also recall from your world history class, the story doesn't stop there. As the plague was fading, a period of revival of Greco-Roman ideas, art, and culture was beginning. The Renaissance brought us breakthroughs in the humanities and sciences, which continue to influence the way we think about and live in the world today. There were triumphs in architecture, sculpture, and painting. In other words, soon after, and even partially concurrently with the Black Death, came a period of growth that it is hard not to cast in the shining light of hope. Obviously, this is an exercise in extreme oversimplification. Nevertheless, I have found this line of thinking to be helpful over the last couple of years. After all, along with our own global health crisis, we have seen the election of the first black and female vice president, massive advances in medicine, triumphs in space exploration, and a bit of billionaire silliness as well, and we witnessed what might happen if we came together to reduce pollution. Simply put, during a period that could have only been faced with calls for despair, we heard earnest calls for unfaltering cooperation in response to divisionary and dangerous forces of humankind's own making and of nature. It is true. The class of 2022 didn't get a high school experience at all similar to those promised to us in Disney Channel original movies, or Taylor Swift songs, or in the young adult novels that line our childhood bookshelves. But as we come of age during this period of change, during this period requiring change, we have access to the resources, knowledge, and ingenuity to lead the way to better days. As the people of the Renaissance taught us, it will take careful thought, innovative problem solving, and radical exercises in empathy. I like to think that the students in this room are uniquely well positioned to take on this role. When we create our art, capture our own stories, research our own advances, and lead our communities, we will do so having lived a life informed by the challenges of the awful times, but also the optimism that comes with knowing even the worst of times are temporary. All of which is, all of which is to say, there's always a reason to be hopeful. The better days are coming, they always do. More often than not, it's simply a question of whether we are orienting ourselves to see them. This will be a challenge, but that's okay. After all, they don't call us warriors for nothing. Now please help me in welcoming Annika Tweetball to the stage. Amanda Schumacher is in her third year as principal secretary. She has been a part of Washington High School's secretarial team for nine years, serving as associate principal secretary for three years. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Executive Director of High Schools, Cynthia Phillips. 
Ms. Phillips supports all aspects of high school education in our district and has been instrumental in the planning of this graduation ceremony. Deputy Superintendent Nicole Quaker, who is responsible for direct administrative supervision for the Office of Learning and Leadership, supporting learning from pre-K to 12th grade, and Superintendent Noreen Bush. Mrs. Bush was named superintendent of the Cedar Rapids Community School District in 2019 and continues to work tirelessly advocating for students, improving systems to achieve our vision and mission, and focusing on results to assure all students are ready for their future. At this time, please welcome Principal Ballard. Thank you. Also, also thank you for that. Students, you may return to your assigned seats. So leave me off the stage. Off you go. Grown folks, if you want to move closer, you're welcome to. If you like your cozy seats where they are, you can stay there too. As they do a Washington tradition, as long as I've been principal, I should probably give you this disclaimer. Many of you are probably reading along in the program with the speeches. Mine's a little different than what's in the program. So uh, be prepared for some changes. And uh, while you're looking in there, hopefully you all saw our insert for our Warrior Alumni Scholarship. We're looking for anybody who wants to help donate. All right, class of 2022, it's time. We are here, and you've earned every moment of this. If I had one word to describe this class and its path, I would say in one word, unique. Sure, first you had the burden of just being a student, and I'd say you did an excellent job at that. You have earned a total, everybody, of 12,349 credits and a cumulative GPA of 2.9. Now, simply put, I would say that is getting it done. More than 48% of this class has had a GPA of over a 3.0. And you've managed to take 189 AP tests, too, with 84 of those tests earning a 3, 4, or 5, which means we had a 44% credit conferral rate. That means, again, 84 credits for AP courses before they left high school. And that doesn't count the concurrent enrollment and the dual credit enrollment that this class has racked up. So the total for all these areas when combined with AP easily equals well over 150 credits earned while still in high school. So I ask if you contributed to that total by taking AP, concurrent, or dual enrollment credit classes, please stand at this time so you can be recognized. You can sit back down. That's good. I didn't know I would get my Thunder Buddy up here. But at Washington High School, our vision is empowering learners. And our district vision is every learner. Future ready! I got a couple claps. That's good. We'll do it at the LSC and during the pre-service, yeah. Future ready. When I read those stats a few moments ago, I know that we have empowered you, and I also know you are ready for your futures. Those academic stats tell the tale of our daily pursuits right here on Forest Drive, whether it be sunny, rainy, freezing rainy, 
snowy, icy, derecho e, or since it's Iowa, all of the above in the same week or sometimes in the same day. I have to talk about the other achievements that took place outside of academia too. We had 12 academic all-state honors earned by nine students in this class. We had 11 students who earned the Tri-Athlete Award. This class earned six all-state awards with two students being the recipients. We had 10 of these seniors earn 26 all-state music honors. Speech had 45 all-state honors with 19 of these seniors being recognized. We also have the two-time defending state champions in debate two. Let's give them a round of applause for those accomplishments. So I salute you, class of 2022, for those accomplishments. But I can't let us leave here without mentioning some of the moments that took our collective breath away. So we had Niall Peterson's quiet confidence leading to seventh place finish this year at State, but I also have to mention that he took second place his sophomore year too. Both of our basketball teams finished one game away from State this year. We had a huge victory, already talked about, about our, uh, against our crosstown rival early in the football season. You might have heard about it. Yeah, we got a football fan up there. There we go. Our drum major, Vivian Shanley, is the best performer with her instrument for two straight years in our state, and she was even featured in the Downbeat magazine because of her skill. Angel Maynard was All-State Speech, Critics' Choice, and State Champion for mine. Tate Sakura Mathis finished eighth at the State Wrestling Tournament. Abby Owens, which I universally call my improv leader, no offense to Tink or Sheets, led the charge this year, not just in improv, but led the charge for peaceful protest that was the largest of our kind. It was student organized, it was in our state, and more than 200 students assembled. Brody Nelson was both my favorite flounder ever and the Southern Svengali in a separate performance and she's done so in, or he's done so in two performances since we've been back at school. Debate is now the two-time champion for state and is led by Jessica Klein and Claudia Gay. Jessica's a two-time state champ. Claudia was also top speaker for the state this year. And lastly, Hannah Stolke became Washington's all-time leading scorer in basketball Miss Iowa Basketball and the Gatorade Player of the Year for the state. For all my stat heads out here, this would mean, I don't know if anybody else has ever had this, this class of Washington has the top speech performer, debater, musician, and basketball player in the state in one year, which I think is pretty special. Yes, you have conquered school like the many classes that came before you, but unlike all of those before, you had a different and unique legacy. You had to reimagine school for the next generation and probably the next after that. Seniors, I want you to think back to your freshman year. How many of you had someone you looked up to? It's not rhetorical, raise your hands. There we go, all right. Well, that was you this year. And you had to recreate traditions without pun unintended momentum, and in some cases, direction. School has been this school for generations, 
And I know my audience this evening has lots of rich, proud warriors who know exactly what I'm talking about. Washington is a special place. And we have been this school for a long, long time, right? Things like Janesty, Pam Slam, Improv Night, Sports Night, Concerts, Plays, the Leadership Retreat, the Pep Rally, our one-of-a-kind bonfire, if you've never been, go. The assemblies we do and the most fun announcements around make up our school in a very unique way. And that's just what came to me off the top of my head when I wrote this speech. This class, the class of 2022, had the uniquely fun but daunting challenge of reimagining school. And that's for the next generation of classes. It was a task that they took on very seriously, and they showed me many things along the way. Olivia Wilkerson and Lucia Salazar taught me and the student body about proper sportsmanship. Jessica Klein showed me passion as she advocated for equal access for all students. Deja Redmond and Lydia Jackson brought me full circle. They participated at the leadership retreat their freshman year, and they were unquestioned as leaders this year. And that showed me growth. <laughs> Maggie Gorman was a positive perseverer as she tried to get off the ground every single state, or I'm sorry, every single Senate tradition with her crew. John Owens challenged me and the admin team on what it means to be a senior and what it can look like. Will Brennan's metamorphosis into an entrepreneur in less than four years, less than four years, shows me what focus can do for anyone. Cameron Wells showed me the power of independence this school year. Jalen DeBound showed me the value of maturity as her poise grew throughout her time here as a student. Allie Dye and Mallory Hartwig ran passes for me as freshmen, and this year they were helping run the school with wisdom and influence. Lily Young and Piper Jackman showed me character independently as they both, they both forced me to have courageous conversations after they had one first. Brendan Ferris and Derek Maysweather showed me the power of joy and positivity. Jada Federick Williams showed me the value of being honest and courageous always. Marquiante Gray showed me to trust even when you don't have to and to believe in something bigger than just yourself. By the way, Marquiante, a deal's a deal, your hoop's right here. Lucky Johnson and Estelle Schneiderman demonstrated self-advocacy in different ways this year. Danny Levy has been speaking her truth even when it can be uncomfortable. Olivia Toma has spoken her mind always. Ari Thomas showed me how to rebound from adversity. Raven Westbrook showed the importance of being vulnerable. Javar Young showed resiliency and the importance of composure. Delana Grant, Yasmin Hurst, and Kira LaGrange taught me the values of simply just smiling and being welcoming. Yeah. Erica Vesey and Keshanta Barber showed me how important connection is regardless of proximity to one another. Class of 2022, you've taught me as much as we have taught you. Thank you. Before my words of wisdom, I need to acknowledge that the many guests we had in our building this year during announcements have something they want to say too. Do you guys remember them? No, you didn't watch announcements? They were announcements. Well, they did send their congratulations. They sent it in video. My good friends at KCRG press play for me. Congratulations, Wash seniors. You finally made it to graduation. Good luck in your future endeavors. Collins Community Credit Union is super proud of every single one of you and can't wait to see all the amazing things you accomplish in the future. Good luck. Yay, you did it. I'm so proud of you.
you. Way to go, Washington Warriors. Here's to a bright future. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you guys. Congratulations. Our Unity Point Health team is incredibly proud of you for leaning in and showing the way when times got tough. Know how much you matter to us and to our community. Way to go, Warriors. Congratulations, fellow Warrior alums. You've been faced with some unprecedented obstacles in your time at Washington High School, and yet here you are today, graduating and ready to take on the next chapter of life. On behalf of the Cedar Rapids Community School District Foundation, we congratulate you and look forward to great things from you in the future. Way to go, Warrior Seniors. The McGrath family of dealerships are really proud of you. Congrats, seniors. You did it. Follow your passion. It will lead to purpose. Don't sell yourself short. You have so much to offer. And surround yourself with others who will empower you to be your best. Congratulations. I can't say it much better than them, so thank you guests. Class of 2022, your unique legacy is secure. You've left me with lots of memories and taken the responsibility on this year with nobility. Next year and 10 years later, we'll be looking at what you did and how we can build off of it. Thank you so much. We are very proud of you and your work adds to one more reason why It's always a great day to be a warrior. Thank you. Please welcome at this time, Superintendent Noreen Bush to congratulate and certify the Washington High School Class of 2022. Class of 2022. I call you the class of hope. Certainly has been a challenging couple of years. However, this year, to watch you lead, embrace, and show underclassmen, show faculty, show me, show our community what it means to be together again. You have built us a paved path of hope. And so that means that you've ignited a vision, you've created strategies, and you have produced results. So what does it mean to be a warrior? Many folks might say it means that you fight. You fight your way through things. And I believe that's just part of it. It also means that you've created a vision of hope. Warriors just know you're going to do it. You see the vision, you build your path, and then you produce results. Mr. Ballard's speech certainly is a sentiment of all the things that you have accomplished, class of 2022. So always remember in your future, and you have heard it multiple times tonight, it is a great day to be a warrior, always a great day to be a warrior, but that warrior is not just fighting, it's igniting a vision for yourself and moving forward towards that vision. It is your superpower. So, superpower, superheroes, like Clark Kent, like Superman, you will be wearing your costumes of the future. Tonight, you're in a cap and gown. You might be wearing uniforms. You might have to have some weights of the world on your shoulder, and perhaps you're in a medical situation, or you have family that needs you. Perhaps you're going to be wearing gear that produces results in a wonderful profession for yourself. Or like Clark Kent, perhaps you'll be wearing glasses and a hat, and a suit. But remember what's underneath Clark Kent's hat and glasses and a suit. It is, that's right, the super power gear of Your super 
superpower gear and what it means to be a warrior, friends. So it is indeed a great day to be a warrior. You will always be a warrior and we will always welcome you home. You are the class of hope. You will forever be in my hearts. Congratulations, class of 2022. Members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, these members of the Washington High School class of 2022 have met the requirements set forth in district policy and state law. Therefore, we are at this time prepared to present them with their diplomas. Congratulations, class of 2022. Noah Allen. Holly Altfilish. Mason Anderson. Savannah Andrews. Aiden Armand. Ariana Bailey. Keshanta Barber. Delaney Barfels. Alex Barrientos. Ryan Baldry, Magnus Beal, Jack Bergquist, Jack Beerbaum, Ashley Bishop, Amariana Booker Crump. <laughs> Preston Bauschlicker. DeAndre Bowman Owens. William Brennan. Shelby Ann Brown. Cheyenne Brown. Zachary Brown. I don't have her on my list. Janiah Brown. Janiah Brown. <laughs> Liesel Bucknell. <laughs> Julia Cassiopo. Layla Carfrey.
Caitlin Carstensen. Josephine Chakota. Jose Sato. Liam Charters. Jessica Klein. Ernesto Cole. Grace Conley. Tanner Cook. Carly Cooper. Jackson Corporon. Amoro Crusoe. Miguel Dondo. Tyler Daniels. Devante Dom. Sinaja Davis. Avriana Dawson. Jalen Debon. Finnegan Deboom. Fiona Deburn. Jace DeCamp. James DeGraft Moffat. Christian DeWolf. Weston DeWolf. Haven Deal. Jabari Dobbs. Andrew Dolan. Jocelyn Doyle. Mackenzie Doyle. Roman Drury. Julia Dudgeon. Allison Duncan. Allison Dye. Max Ryan Edgar. Mackenzie Icorn. Connor Eisenman and Aralon Evans. Brendan Ferris. <laughs> Emily Beckham. Jada Frederick Williams. Tay Fields. Isaac Fieser. Lily Fatrol. Grace Fox. Sarah Francisco. (laughs) 
Jalen Frazier. Charlotte Fusco. Ethan Galushis. Tremere Gaines. Trasan Gaines. Claudia Gay. Kai Gearhart. Samantha Gurkey. Cade Gibson. Maggie Gorman. Delena Grant. Marchionte Gray. Rain Gray. Ukiah Gross. Sophia Guerrero. Phineas Habonimana. Claire Hafner. Osley Hagen. Amari Hegstrom Wells. Lyndon Haig. Calvin Hamer. Ainsley Harger. More. <laughs> Mallory Hartwig, <laughs> Demi Haug, <laughs> Julia Havel. <laughs> Allison Hayes. Ethan Helgenberger. <laughs> Preston Helly. JJ Henderson. <laughs> Ladamus Henderson. Yasmin Hers, Mervyn Howard, A2, Gabby Hollaby, Piper Jackman, Lydia Jackson. Donovan Jagnow. Winston Jamison. John Derzinka. 
Lucky Johnson. Amaya Jones. Isaiah Jones. Saluna Joy. Naomi Juvenary. John Paul Kahiku. Jeremy Kahiku. Madison Kaiser. Santiago Kais Vera. Keegan Keck. Dylan Kelsey. Hex Kennedy. Skylone Kapaya. Logan Kuehl. Kira LaGrange. Eliana Lamar. Ada Lane. Aiden Lafridge. Enoch LaHue, Danielle Levy, <laughs> Antoine Logan, Grace Lundquist, Patience Song. Nyerica Lowe. Amber Lucas. Dayton Lucky. Ethan Martin. Riley Martin. Leah Matthews. Derek Mays Weathers, Jr. Angel Maynard. Daniel McCaffrey. Lucas McCarley. Nia McClam. Nathan McDermott. Mason McDowell. Jason McElroy. <laughs> Haley McIntosh. Jazari McKiernan. Luke McNamara Bowers. 
Tess Mefford. Andre Miller. Tara Morgan. Alina Nelson. Brody Nelson. Demetrius Nelson. Maxwell Nimicus. Anna Newman. Jonas Nayuma Gailey. Charles Noak. Olivia Novak. Elizabeth Obst. Aiden O'Connor. Evelyn Oft. Good job. Win U. Tyler Orm. Reed Ortiz. Abigail Owens. Jonathan Owens. Brady Papendick. Armani, Armani, Armani Parker. Armani Parker. Kamon Payne. Anna, Anna, Anna. Anna Pekosh. Aleem. Aleem Penn. <laughs> John Angel Perez Riviera. Emily Oldorf. <laughs> Niall Peterson. Vivian Fong. Kiara Powers. Avery Ramsden. <laughs> McLean Ray. Dejanera Redman. Pippa Ritchie. William Ritchie. Ramon Rockwell. Jack Rogers. Michael Rooney. Delfina Rosales. Spencer Rowland. Savannah Rubio. Emily Sidoris. 
Trevor Sackshaw. Lucia Sals Lazar. Ashton Saldana. Isabel Schmidt. Nathan Schmidt. Estelle Schneiderman. Olivia Schultz. Henry Selk. Austin Sexton. Vivian Shanley. Lanaya Shaw. Cade Skogman. Cameron Smaby. Ethan Thomas Smith. Jenna Smith. Tasia Smith. Hannah Snipke. Mikkel Snyder. Tiana Soper. Evie Stabler Knapp. Irish Stoll. Hannah Stulke. Jake Sturtz. Tate Sakura Mathis. Olivia Toma. Ariana Thomas. Madison Thomas. Miguel Torado. Annika Tweet Ball. Alyssa Valley. Hunter Vanderseen. Allison Van Slyke. Nathaniel Velez. Erica Vesey. Jasmine West. <laughs> Molly Wallace. Jordan Weiss. Cameron Wells. <laughs> Raven Westbrook. Tony Westmoreland. Nathan Wallace. 
Slade White. Liberty Wickham. Jade Wiegand. Damian Wilcox. Olivia Wilkerson. Aiden Williams. Anna Wilson. Javen Wilson. Jermaine Wilson. Nicholas Wilsey. Michaela Woodard. Javar Young. Lily Young. Roman Young. Julia Zrodnik. Emma Balkenhol. Natyawa Chidpanthium. Antonin Jakomowski. Rauhia Mohammed. That's my fault. Teachers didn't know that yet. So before I conclude this graduation, I need to explain the recession will be a little different than it's been in the past. We'll actually have the traditional recession, and then we'll have what we're calling a victory lap, or a second line, for all those who just want to be a part. So parents, students, be advised. At this time, I'm going to stall for 30 seconds because we had a long line back there. I don't have any good jokes. So I'm sorry, but I am going to say with pleasure, I now present Washington High School graduating class of 2022.
Live and Local is proudly sponsored by Eels and Tronbold Law Offices. McGrath Family of Dealerships. And Wald Collision Center in Fairfax.